Electronics. This is a video on ISRO Scientist Electronic Post Preparation and we are going to see some questions from the Electromagnetic Theory subject. So let us see what is the first question. A uniform plane wave that is propagating in a medium with epsilon r equal to 18 and peak electric field of 8 volt per meter. Determine the peak magnetic field intensity. Now, this is a question connecting electric field intensity and magnetic field intensity. We have been given the electric field value. We need to find the value of magnetic field intensity. Okay, so the relation connecting this two is intrinsic impedance. It is given by intrinsic impedance eta is equal to the electric field intensity by magnetic field intensity or E by H. Also, eta can be defined as root of mu by epsilon. Now, this mu is the permeability and epsilon is the permittivity. I hope these terms are familiar to you. You can write the value of mu for a material as mu 0 mu r where mu 0 is the permeability of vacuum of free space and mu r is the relative permeability. Now this mu 0 is a constant value and epsilon can be written as epsilon 0 into epsilon r. Epsilon 0 is the permittivity of free space and epsilon r is the permittivity that is relative permittivity. Okay. So, this mu 0 and epsilon 0 are constant values. So, you can write eta is equal to root of mu 0 by epsilon 0 into root of mu r by epsilon r. Now, in the question, they have given the value of epsilon r and we are going to take the value of mu r is equal to 1. Okay, since we have not given, we are going to take the value as 1. Okay, now we are going to find the value of uh, eta here and also we can equate this eta from this. Let this be equation number 1. We can substitute this as E by H. Now, we have given the value of E here. It is 8 volt per meter. So, it is 8. Okay, so the value of this root of mu 0 by epsilon 0 is 120 pi. So this is one term you need to actually by heart whenever you are uh, going to attempt this electromagnetic theory questions. Because this is a constant term. Root of mu 0 by epsilon 0 is equal to 120 pi. So this is obtained by substituting the values of mu 0 and epsilon 0. Okay, so this much is given. And mu r we are taking is 1. What is the value of epsilon r? It is 80. Okay. So, just solve this and find the value of your h. Now, 120 pi into root of 1 by 80. This is obtained as 88.85. So, h is equal to 8 by 88.85 which will be obtained as 0 0.090 ampere per meter. So, the value of your magnetic field intensity is represented in units of ampere per meter. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is your option A, which is 0 0.090 ampere per meter or option A. Okay, so let us see the next question. Skin depth depends on dash. A. Conductivity B. Permeability C. Frequency of incident radiation D. All of this. So, before answering this question, what is actually skin depth? Skin depth means whenever uh, some electromagnetic wave is incidenting a conductor, say this be a conductor, the wave whenever it is incidenting this conductor, after a particular particular depth or a distance, the wave will start getting attenuated. That is, the wave will start uh, getting attenuated whenever it is incidenting a conductor and that is uh, determined with the help of a particular depth. So, this attenuation will be get pronounced after this particular depth. So, this depth is called skin depth. Okay. So, this skin depth depends on what all things? A. Conductivity. B. Permeability. C. Frequency of incident radiation. D. All of the above. So, this attenuation of this electromagnetic wave depends on all these things. 
that is the conductivity of this material then the permeability of the material and also the frequency of the wave which is incidenting all these factors are actually depending the skin depth that is that how the how much distance uh, from which the wave will get started at invasion so this factor is affected by all these terms that is conductivity permeability and frequency of incident wave or the radiation so the correct answer for this question is option d which is all of the above the next question is a wave propagating in a lossless dielectric has components e equal to 500 cos 10 raised to 70 minus beta z a raised to x this is the electric field component uh, h is the it is equal to 1.1 cos 10 raised to 70 minus beta z a raised to y this is a magnetic field component if the wave is traveling at vp equal to 0.5 c what is mu r and epsilon r so they are asking the relative permeability and a relative permittivity okay so we need to actually find a relation connecting these terms okay so we have uh, already discussed in our earlier question that there is a relation connecting the electric field magnetic field and this relative permittivity and uh, relative permeability that is our intrinsic impedance or eta so eta is defined as the electric field strength by magnetic field strength so here that is e by h that is the peak values are 500 and 1.1 so 500 by 1.1 and that can be equated with your root of mu by epsilon because your intrinsic impedance is also defined as root of mu by epsilon and we can substitute the values of uh, mu and epsilon as that is 500 by 1.1 will be equal to root of mu 0 mu r by epsilon 0 epsilon r again we have discussed that we can write this as root of mu 0 by epsilon 0 into root of mu r by epsilon r right so what is the value of this mu 0 by epsilon 0 we have already discussed this it is 120 pi 120 pi okay so for my equation for root of mu r by epsilon r it will be root of mu r by epsilon r is equal to 500 by 1.1 into 120 pi. So, this is your equation number 1. Okay, we need to find the values of two unknown variables. So, we need to form a equation to equate and then find the value. Okay, so we have obtained one relation that is root of mu r by epsilon r is equal to 500 by 1.1 into 120 pi. Again, in the question, they have given that the wave is traveling at Vp equal to 0.5c. Then they are asking that. Okay, so what is this Vp? Vp is actually the phase velocity. So whenever you are uh, talking about a wave, that is an electromagnetic wave, there are two types of velocities, phase velocity and group velocity. Now, what is phase velocity and what is group velocity? Okay, so let us uh, just introduce those two terms to you. Vp means phase velocity that is when uh, you are thinking of an electromagnetic wave there is a phase component there is an amplitude component okay so this phase components are traveling in the uh, velocity called phase velocity so whenever we are uh, dividing these phase and amplitude and other components we assume that the phase components are traveling with a velocity of phase velocity and Group velocity means the amplitude or the envelope of the wave is traveling with a velocity called group velocity. Okay, so whenever uh, you are attempting these two terms, you should keep these things in mind. That is phase velocity is the velocity of the phase component or the uh, velocity with which this component, phase component is traveling. And the group velocity means the velocity of the envelope of the wave or the amplitude. The amplitude variations are traveling in the group velocity. In the question, they have given Vp or the phase velocity as 0.5c. Now, c is the speed of light that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Okay, so what is the equation for Vp? Vp is equal to c by root of 
mu r epsilon r. Okay. So this is an equation, general equation for Vp. Now we have given that this Vp is equal to 0 0.5 c. Now this c and c is equal. So we can cancel it. Okay. So now we can equate 1 by root of epsilon square so, uh, mu, mu r. Sorry, 1 by root of mu r epsilon r is equal to 0 0.5. So this is our equation number 2. Now from equation 1 and 2, we can find the values of mu r and epsilon r. So by solving these two equations, you will get the value of mu r and epsilon r and it is equal to mu r is equal to 2.42 and epsilon r is equal to 1.65. So this is the values obtained whenever you are solving these two equations. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is option B which is 2.42 and 1.65. That is your mu r is 2.42 and epsilon r is 1.65. The next question is the transmitting and receiving antennas operating at 1.5 gigahertz with gains 25 dB and 30 dB respectively are separated by 1.5 kilometer. If the transmitted power is 200 watt, then the maximum power received is dash milliwatt. So we need to find the what the received power or the uh, power received at the receiver side. Uh, and it is obtained in milliwatts. Options are option A 7.12, B 2.12, C 3.12 and D none of these. Okay, so we need to find the received power. So this is actually a direct question. But how to do such a question we need to know. There are some things we need to uh, identify or we need to change or we need to figure out from the question. Okay, so what is the, this is a direct equation let me tell you. The received power equation PR is given by lambda by 4 pi r square into gt into gr into pt. Now, I will explain all, all these terms. PR is the received power which we, which we need to find. Lambda is the wavelength. Now, if you uh, see the question, uh, can you see lambda anywhere? Can you see the wavelength? No. But you know that the equation for lambda is equal to c by f. That is c is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 by f is equal to the frequency. Frequency is 1.5 gigahertz. So it is 1.5 into 10 raised to 9. So this is your wavelength. Now by 4 pi into r. What is r? r is the distance of separation between the transmitter and the receiver. So r is given as r is 1.5 kilometer. So 1.5 into 10 raised to 3 meters. Okay. So this much is clear. Now, GT and GR are the gain of the transmitter and the receiver antenna respectively. So, these values are given in dB, right? So, 25 dB and 30 dB. We actually need the values in ratio. So, in order to convert this dB to ratio, we know that power in dB, that is 25 dB, is actually obtained by taking the 10 log 10 of your GT. 25 dB is a transmitter gain. Okay, so... This value is 25 dB. So, how to find GT? So, it is 2.5 is equal to log 10 GT. And take the anti-logarithm. You will get the value of GT. That is simply take 10 raised to 2.5. Then you will get GT. And also take 10 raised to, it is 30. So, 10 raised to 3 is equal to GR. Okay, I hope this is clear. That is we need to find the ratio values. But the values are given in dB. So we need to find the 10 raised to 2.5 and 10 raised to 3. This is actually obtained from this equation. That is 10 log 10 GT is equal to 25 dB. And 10 log 10, uh, 10, log 10 GR is equal to 30 dB. Okay. So if you take this you will get the values as GT is equal to 316.3. 2 something and GR is equal to 1000 that is 10 raised to 3. Okay, so this is the values obtained. Also, what is the value of PT? It is directly given in the question that the power, transmitter power is 200 watt. 
So PT is equal to 200 watt. Okay, so all the terms are now clear and familiar. So we need to just substitute these values into the equation and find the result. Okay, so I'm going to substitute these values. So lambda is C by F. So 3 into 10 raised to 8 by F is 1.5 into 10 raised to 9 into 4 into 3.14 into R is 1.5 into 10 raised to 3. This whole square into 316.2 into 1000 into 200. So this is actually a long calculation. So if you have a calculator then you can simply do it. Anyway, if you solve this, you will get the value as 7.12 millivolt. So, this is your receiver power. Okay, so you can simply do this question, but you need to identify or figure out that you have to change the values of GT and GR. You cannot directly apply 25 and 30. Also, you have to find the value of lambda here, which is equal to C by F. Okay, so you should know these basic equations, then you can solve this question very easily. Okay, so these are the questions which I have included in this video. We will see with more questions from various subjects for the preparation of ISRO Scientist Electronic Post. Okay, so if you want to watch more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. And also if this video was uh, useful for your preparation, please do like it and also share this video with all your friends. Okay, so thanks for watching and keep on watching.